Hello everybody. Today we are going to discuss a very important and a common disease of the skin which is psoriasis. For more such videos, head on to the channel to be told notes and check out the playlist on oral pathology and diseases of the skin. So getting right into it, psoriasis is a non-contagious, chronic, proliferative, autoimmune mediated inflammatory condition of the skin which is characterized by arrhythmatous plaques covered by silvery white scales. So as you can see here, there are these well demarcated plaques that are present on the skin. They appear to have a, you know, a silvery white appearance and an underlying arrhythmatous or a red base. What exactly happens here is there is some sort of an injury or a trauma which causes the activation of your dendritic cells. This further leads to the activation of your T cells. These are the key cells of these disease, right? So it leads to the activation of your bl white blood cells or the T cells, which causes a overproduction of your cytokines. So these are your pro-inflammatory cytokines, which lead to sustained inflammation in the skin, more damage to your keratinocytes and a lot of proliferation in your keratinocytes. So what basically happens is in the normal areas where the skin takes 23 days, so the keratinocytes take 23 days to reach the stratum corneum. In this disease, they take only five to six days and they're not mature. So they keep overproducing, 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 piling up on top of the skin and then they lead to these silvery white scales. So it is non-contagious and it's chronic in nature. So it lasts over many years. The most common type of psoriasis is plaque psoriasis, which is characterized by uh, these well demarcated white silvery lesions on your scalp, on your trunk, on the extensors of the extremities. That is the outside surfaces of your knees, your elbows and the lower half of the extremities. Uh, there is also uh, involvement of the nails in up to 90% of plaque psoriasis cases. So that leads to pitting and thickening of the nails. It also may cause bleeding points under the nail pits. Now why I put this slide is to highlight that this is a disease with a lot of uh, psychosocial comorbidity associated with it. Even celebrities such as Kim Kardashian and Carrie D. English have come out and revealed that they have the disease and in general i think we should be more compassionate to the people who have it and if you have it you should be compassionate to yourself coming to the etiology the exact cause is unknown but as i said it's believed to be an autoimmune disease mediated by your t lymphocytes it is linked to specific hla antigens there appears to be a strong genetic predisposition because uh, in up to one third of the individuals affected by it they they have a family history of psoriasis the main triggers as we spoke that uh, lead to the whole cascade are infections psychological stress cold and dry weather and the injury so often these psoriatic uh, lesions they appear in the site of injury and that is known as the cobner's phenomenon as we discussed uh, the basic funda of this disease is that the normal turnover rate of the skin is 23 days but in this condition the turnover rate is reduced to only three to five days so you have these uh, huge bunch of activated t cells that cause uh, they cause the production of a lot of cytokines that lead to swelling, redness and a fast turnover of the skin cells and this whole process is self-sustained. Coming to the clinical features, it's a common disease, it affects 2-5% to 5 of the population, that's 2-5 to 5 people out of every 100. The onset is in the second and third decade of life and it's more common in women. Initially it starts as small delineated dry papules which are covered with a white scale so these are less than 0.5 centimeter eventually they coalesce they join together and they form these large plaques the five main types are plaque guttate inverse pustular and erythrodermic out of which plaque forms up to 90 percent of the cases they are symmetrical lesions they may occur on both sides of the body and as we spoke they are common in the scalp, elbows, knees, back, chest, face and abdomen. They are generally asymptomatic but they may cause itching. Uh, 
because psoriasis literally translates to itchy disease in Greek. So a common complaint in patients is they are slightly itchy. Now this is a disease which persists for years with periods of exacerbation and remission. So it is a disease that comes and goes and the main uh, belief is that the remission should be longer than the exacerbation. They are worse in winter. It is better in summer due to maybe UV light exposure. It is triggered by stress and anxiety and up to 11% of the patients, they go on to suffer from psoriatic arthritis uh, because there's also inflammation in the synovial fluid of the joints. Uh, it may also affect the TMJ. Now what is Auspitz sign? This is an important viva question. Auspitz sign is nothing but the tiny bleeding points that are revealed when deep scales are removed. So when you remove these scales, you see these underlying small tiny bleeding points. Here as well you can see it when the scale is removed. You can see these tiny bleeding points most commonly due to the thinning of the dermis here. right? So oral manifestations, it is extremely, extremely rare in the oral cavity. Uh, if it appears, it may appear as a yellow, yellowish white black. It may be papillary elevated lesions or they may be ulcerations. The most important diagnostic criteria as per some physicians is that oral lesion activity should parallel cutaneous lesion activity. So if you have skin diseases, then we can go on to diagnose it as oral psoriasis. Uh, an important thing to note here is there is a high prevalence of uh, benign migratory glossitis in patients with psoriasis. So the incidence is up to 5%. Coming to the histopathological features, straight away when you look at this diagram, what you can see is there is an abnormal thickening of the epidermis and the dermis, right? So you have your stratum corneum, which is so thick the stratum granulosum is almost absent and a classic finding that you see here is that your retiriches are elongated and they are clubbed they are trying to join each other there's also what you can see the presence of microabscesses which is a collection of inflammatory cells in your stratum corneum so let's look at it in a bit more detail first of all you have parakeratosis that is uh, the retention of nuclei in your stratum corneum generally as the keratinocytes they migrate from the basal layer up till the stratum corneum they lose their nuclei but because the turnover rate is so fast it's six times faster than normal there is an abnormal maturation so this leads to the retention of the nuclei. So the first point is there is parakeratosis. The second is there is an absence of stratum granulosum, which is the granular layer of the skin. The third thing is, as we spoke, there is test tube shaped retiriches. So in this diagram, as you can see, your retiriches, they are test tube shaped and uh, they are clubbing with each other. Uh, you can see because of uh, a huge amount of inflammation, you can see torches, dilated capillaries extending high in the papillae. So you have these capillaries. The epithelium is thinned over connective tissue papillae, which causes your bleeding points. Another important feature is the Monroe's abscess, which is your collection of polymorphonuclear leukocytes, microabscesses in the stratum corneum. So here you can see this is the enlarged version of the stratum corneum. You can see these uh, collection of uh, uh, polymorphonuclear leukocytes, which is also given a fancy name, which is the Monroe's abscess. Coming to the treatment, uh, a bit away from what Schaefer also says, the first thing is patient advice. You have to make them understand this is an incurable disease. It's chronic recurrent it's not an infection and it's not contagious although it has trigger factors uh, for mild to moderate cases the most common treatment is the application of uh, topical corticosteroids uh, maybe in combination with vitamin d salicylic acid alternatives 
are also there which include retinoids vitamin d coal tar derivatives etc for moderate to severe cases you can also go for photo uh, phototherapy which involves uh, pua and uvb systemic treatments include methotrexate cyclosporin and the new systemic biological agents which target the specific inflammatory pathways that cause this whole disease before i end the video i have three questions for you what is the ospitz sign what is monroe's abscess and what type of fretty ridges are seen in psoriasis so with this we come to the end of the video thank you so much for watching have a great day